Hey guys, so I know it feels like we talk about the same things over and over and over and over again. And we do. <laughs> and we do. Um, it's like, it's, I don't know, it's like the same topics just resurface over and over again. Um, sometimes we still have the same stance as before and sometimes our thought process change with them. But... Um, I still haven't like did anything with her eyebrows or eyelashes yet, but um, I haven't even combed her hair or anything since uh, I finished rooting on her. I um, I had so many outfits for her to wear um, while she was bald that she couldn't wear, but. Sadly, they are mostly all like summery outfits, and so now it's kind of cool. And it's like, now it's like, what am I gonna put her on? Like, I'm gonna dress her so bad now that I don't have to worry about matching a hat. I got a lot of, um, a lot of people message me about buying winter, um, right now. She's not for sale doesn't mean that she won't be for sale later. Um, Cause you guys know how I do. But I am, uh, I'm having a harder time selling babies that I know that I can't get again. Her kit is sold out. And um, I don't know, I'm, I'm finding that if I'm gonna keep a baby in my collection, I kind of want to keep the ones that's kind of sold out because I I know I'm not the only one. I also know that there are people who don't do not care about sold out edition babies, but I am definitely one that likes, you know, limited and rare edition babies in my collection. Um I don't know, it's like, it's like right now, as much as I love the, the Laura's that's out here, it's, it's becoming like, like I'm like almost tired of seeing them. Well, I am tired of seeing them actually. But, you know, if it's always that one that stands out or different, you know, I don't mind. But it's, it's. You know, it's just, I understand like the, the, the sculptors trying to make the most money they can make off of their, their kids and keep it from not being to a point that's too big. She's, she's a, a true newborn baby. Like she's not a fat baby. Um, so yeah, so I, I get them wanting to. Like, I'm going to put her on her boots. Like, <laughs> I got so many things I want to do with her. So I get that. So I don't knock it. And I still support those sculptors. And I still buy those kits. But babies that I am less likely to be quick to sell are the ones that are, like, very rare. Um, the ones that I can't get my hands on again if I let it go. You know, it's like, if I, it, even as much as I love Katie Lauren, if I was to sell her, I could buy 10 more of her. You know what I mean? Or or paint 10 more of her. Because her kit is unlimited. It it takes down the value for me. Um, it's also one of those things where, as much as I love the kit, and I think it's an amazing kit, I would pay less for that kit. Um, as a completed baby as I would one that's more rare if that makes sense um if if unless it's like very the painting is very exquisite and rare you know what I mean like I'm not gonna pay my top price for uh just a nice Laura 
it has to be like exceptionally nice for me to pay my top price. That's kind of how I collect. I've been talking a lot about how I collect. It doesn't mean it's the right way or wrong way or you have to do the same as me. It just means that's how, this is just how I collect. This is how my thought process goes. Um, like I said, it's always an exception to the rule. So like if uh, one of my favorite artists paint, and I'm just using Laura right now because it's hot and everybody's talking about them um, as an example. But this goes for any like open edition popular kit. If my favorite artist paints Alora, one of my favorite artists paints Alora, and they do it um, like, okay, I'll, I got a good example. Like, uh, Bolera Baby did a Laura. It was a Caucasian Laura. It was beautiful. I loved it. Um, but, um, I would not have paid, like, her top price for her babies, like, for it. Because there's a million other Caucasian babies that look almost close. Like, there was nothing that would have really separated mine from everybody else's as much. So, that wouldn't have been a baby that I would have break the bank for or bend my rules for. But... But, let's say if, um, let's say if, um, someone painted it like in an Asian skin tone or something like that, and I was really, really looking for an Asian baby at the time, even though the, the facial features are not Asian like but it's like a nice different skin tone from what everybody else is going for and it has some really beautiful markings and all that great jazz I would be willing to pay a little bit more for that like that's just you know that's just my thing like I'm I'm very funny about how I spend my money on my collection um, I'm not a very, um, quick spender. Like, people might think, oh, if I want it, I just run and go get it. No. Absolutely not. It takes me, I miss a lot of babies like that because, um, I'm thinking before I reach out to the artist and by the time I reach out sometime, the baby is gone. But when you're spending that kind of money, I want to take my time. I, I see so many collectors do this um, where, like, they're chasing what everybody else has. I'm not one of those collectors. Like, I, I watch people because I'm a people watcher. I'm a Lola. So I'm trying to see why that's gathering all well. Um... So I will, I see people like if someone uh, buys from a particular artist, all of a sudden um, everyone else start following that artist, which is how we kind of find other artists, right? And that's okay. But for me, if it's not my style of baby, I don't care what you buy and how many people buy it, I'm not really that particular about it I, I will love your collection I will congratulate you on your baby but I will not be like stalking that artist to buy a baby just because someone else had it that's just you know that's not my thing it has to speak to me so yes just like everybody else I am influenced by other people collections I am influenced by you know the different pretty pictures, et cetera, et cetera. I, I do the same thing. It's just about every other collector out here when I'm trying to buy a baby. But 
The only thing that's a little different from me than some people is I don't necessarily, well, I don't at all. I don't just like something because somebody else has it, if that makes sense. I think when you get caught up in that trend is when you miss out on a baby that you really would love to have in your collection. She looks so good in blue. Um, she's going to be real cute in summer clothes. I was looking for the thing for her hair. But I don't have it, which is so stupid of me. But oh well. But um, yeah, I think that that uh, I just want to see her with these boots on. I don't care. I know they don't match. I'm just so curious to see her with the boots on. But I I think that's when you end up spending money. One, you end up spending a lot of unnecessary money, and then two. You end up with a lot of babies in your collection that you don't even want to look at, to be honest. Because you're just chasing somebody else's dream. Or buying based off of somebody else's taste and not your own. That, you know, back in the day they would say chasing the Joneses. You know, you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's an old saying. Like the old people would say. Um... But yeah, it it's it's a uh, it's not a good habit to have if you don't have a lot of money. Cuz like I said, when that one baby come out that you really really want and it's got a nice price tag on it, you're not going to be able to buy it. Why? Because you'll be done spent all your little money on <laughs> look at her with these little boots up these boots are so cute <laughs> look at her in her boots oh my gosh she is so cute um you know what I mean I spent all your money on something that you didn't even really want you just got it because so and so had it I I I don't never understand that though And, well, in a way, I do because here's the thing: women are impulsive buyers. So, if we see two kananas with a cute outfit on, and she's looking so cute in that outfit, and you got all these cute clothes, and you're like, "Man, if I had two kananas in my collection, I would have put two kananas on this." So you go out and you want to buy your own two kananas. So you go buy your two kananas. To, buy, to put in your collection. Oh, I wonder if I should put you on that. And then you can wear your boots. Oh, you can wear your boots if you want to. I got some tights too. <laughs> this girl. This is a, a big. This is actually. This is a bigger newborn size. But we're going to still. We're going to still make it work. But yeah, I'm just telling you guys this because not that it's going to matter because people that's like that are just going to do it anyway. Um, and I'm speaking in general, but I do see people, I do know people that do it. It's funny. I kind of laugh at it. But I'm saying this because I also then see those same people get frustrated or say, they can't afford to buy, spend X, Y, Z on a doll. And I'm thinking to myself, like, but you can. But you're too busy buying everything that you see, not that you want. So when people are judging other collectors saying, I can't see how they spend $4,000 or $5,000 on a doll. Well, if you just bought four toddlers at $1,800 a piece, you spent over five grand and some. But some people collect for quantity and not quality, or for show, not for desire or want. Um, and that's okay too. Cause it's your money, so it's whatever you wanna wanna do. I mean, there's no right or wrong way of collecting. There are some people that that's not even really 
into the dolls as much as they are dressing the babies, right? Some people buy because they like fashion and they love to dress up the baby. So it's, it's the clothes that they are into and the babies is just the accessory. <laughs> Does that make sense? The baby is really the accessory, not the main feature. They just need something to put the clothes on because they love shopping and they love doing clothes. And there's nothing wrong with that because we design our hobby to our own liking and whatever makes us relaxed and enjoy it is okay. Your hair is so frizzy. <laughs> Not frizzy, frizzy, but messy. And it's okay because is your money, is your hobby, and if it makes you feel good, I don't care. Like, do it. Even if it is your thing to have this, to match, you know, go match for match, toe to toe with, you know, everybody in the, in, in the community. Some people, whoever their friend is at that, that moment, they gonna have every doll that they have. When they get through being friends with that person, the next person they be with, they gonna have every doll that that person have. Like they, they will never set their own trend because they just like to have whatever everybody else have, and that's okay. As long as they're happy. Oh, I gotta go.